We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hello everyone, this is Rob Scribner from Easy Street And I want to welcome you to the show And this show makes me sad So, but first... Before we get going, Easy Street can be found on Spreaker, uh, Good Talk Radio, uh, also on Cutting Edge TV, and several other platforms. And if you want to find out where those platforms are, go down to the description below, and you'll find links to all of them. I will have a German Shepherd coming in and out of my screen because she just likes to do that. But today, I want to talk about a video I watched, and uh, let's see if I can get it up on the screen here. The Seattle's called The Fight for the Soul of Seattle. And uh, I'm going to play a little bit of it here, see if uh, I don't get in trouble. I'm going to say some hard things about this place. I don't like Seattle, but because I love it. And I'm going to start by saying this. Seattle no longer feels the need to stop anyone from doing anything for any reason at any time. The most stunning city in America is dying, all right. Businesses and citizens have been largely abandoned, left to fend for themselves in favor of a self-congratulatory compassion, a phony grace. If you shout long enough, Seattle will give you what you want. Will abandon a police precinct, an entire chunk of the city, and all the people that live and work there. All of it is yours for the taking if you shout long enough. If you want to live somewhere, anywhere, and if you want to pile up garbage and waste and filth, you can do that too. Parks, street corners, neighborhood nooks and crannies, have at it. You think Seattle's going to stop you? We'll even do away with the navigation team just to make sure. Feeling artistic? You're in luck. Seattle is your canvas. Have at it. Express yourself. Nobody's going to stop you from leaving temporary scars on the psyche of a damaged city. They're too busy reimagining. If you want to keep using the drugs that are killing you, we'll help out. We'll give you needles. We'll order the cops not to make arrests. We'll legalize hard narcotics on our streets. We will stand by and watch as you kill yourself. Because Seattle no longer feels the need to stop anyone doing anything for any reason so there you go good old seattle now why why would i be concerned about seattle well because i grew up there and uh seattle was a magical place um i grew up i um i'm I was born in 1960 as a kid grew up uh in the 60s as a kid Teenager in the 70s had a great, you know, it was a wonderful time hunting and fishing and uh, all the great things the ferry boats, the going to the city Pike Place Market, uh, the Seattle Center where we uh, had rides and stuff like that. Um, as kids, I, I mean, like 14 years old or so, we'd take the bus from Kent where I lived and we'd go to Seattle, spend the day and evening there running around this, uh, the city as kids and, uh, and the cops were there and they'd check and make sure that we're behaving ourselves. Cause they knew we we're just crazy little kids having fun in Seattle. Um, and then we grabbed the bus and head on back to our homes and our parents were not worried. And it was, um, it was wonderful. Um, Seattle's beautiful. Seattle has a lot of rain, but it's very green. Um, when it's sunny time or, or sunny or uh, summertime there, it's when it is gorgeous, it is incredibly gorgeous. It's um, breathtaking, at least it was. And this is pitiful, and I'm sorry, but I am going to take sides a little bit. But I don't blame the president. I'm not going to blame the next president. It's not their fault. They are try, They have tried to step into these cities and states, and the states have blocked them because states have their own powers. So let's not get into, well, it's because of Trump or because it's because of Biden or whoever else. Stop that. That's not even reality. It's not their fault. 
It's the city uh, mayors and governors. And this is happening not only in Seattle. It's happening in San Francisco and Los Angeles and several us. New York is happening in two of them. They're all getting this attitude of hands off, give them freedom. It's a social experiment, they call it. Um, let them have Let's not enforce the laws. Let's not stand behind our police. And uh, it doesn't work, and it's not working. The only success stories in this movie, if you watch it, it's an hour and a half. Um, Como made a movie like this about two years ago. Um, and then this is a follow-up movie to it, not thinking that they'd be reporting on worse circumstances, but it literally got worse from the first report they did. Good movie to watch. You need to sit down and give yourself an hour and a half to watch this. <clears throat> now, they just don't point out all the bad. They also show some successes. And um, uh, the successes are from leadership that enforced laws and enforced programs on people. And a lot of people say, well, we can't infringe on their rights. We got to give them their own accountability. And that's not true when um, uh, most of this, and this, we're all we're talking about homelessness, drugs, and uh, pretty much those those two things together. And most most of the time, when somebody becomes homeless, a lot of times drugs does gets interfered. And when drugs come in, you're possessed. Someone needs to step in because we're sitting there thinking, well, when they're ready, they'll ask for help. And, and they'll tell you themselves, the ones that actually were able to get out of it, it took help. It took somebody to interfere in their life and change the direction of the way that they were living. Uh, for example, uh, there will be a story in there where a cop arrested a man um, and literally threw the book at him and he had to go to jail. And because... When you're in jail, you can't be on drugs and stuff. While he was there, it gave him time to reflect and a chance to get actually off of drugs. I mean, we wasn't using at the time. And that's when he, the person that was uh, arrested, made a positive decision to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. But it took interference and it took embracing and using our laws. And you say, well, oh, the other thing is mental health is the other issue here. So uh, even with mental health, even with homelessness, and even with drug addiction, our laws, although they may, uh, you have to almost call it a tough love. Tough love is kind of the love that we grew up on in our generation. Like, suck it up. Time to be responsible. You're now accountable for your actions. And either you go the right direction or you don't. And... Uh, the reason I really am frustrated is because there is states out there that got their crap together when it comes to homelessness and drug addiction and mental illness. Uh, in Rhode Island, they have a, uh, 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 they, and it's very costly. But how costly is it compared to what we're letting the, the, our cities go to crap? Is uh, these uh, this program that they have in uh, Rhode Island it is like a prison in a way. It's a, a sectored out versus your first, you know, your major offenders that need to get off drugs. They have a high security area for people that are actually coming off the drugs, which is insane. And it takes a week or so just to get past that point. Then they go into a phase two where it's still secured, but it's also they're getting help. They're getting counseling, uh, counseling. Uh, medications to help uh, uh, get through the, the change, um, opportunities to get their lives together, opportunity to be trained, opportunities to uh, actually learn a career, opportunities to go to school, opportunities to uh, sit in uh, group settings and get therapy and get um, um, conversations going with people who are uh, like-minded. And their success rate is amazing. Instead of um, cities that are taking this attitude of the social experiment, leave them alone. And let, by the way, let's let them destroy our cities. Let's let them destroy our businesses. Let's let them destroy our residential areas. 
um, it's, it does not work. And all it's doing is causing people to want to live, leave the cities. And the other thing is I, I, I can't help but say people in the cities, what is wrong with you? You continue to reelect the same kind of people that are destroying your city and your state. And, and where do you get off thinking that you can make laws and regulations that will affect the people in the red zone, you might say, us in, the, say, eastern Washington or central Oregon, where we have farmings and things like and, and agriculture and things like that. And yet you feel that you can make all these rules and regulations for us, yet we feed you over here. It's like we need to get leadership that one is – understands both sides of what's needed in states. I mean, all this PC uh, living and stuff like that is killing us. Uh, people need to realize that they're adults and they need to be accountable for themselves. The government should not be the one that says, you need to use pronouns. You need to uh, uh, hire so many uh, uh, different races uh, uh, per, over the fact that of their education and their experience and things like that. We need to go back to diversity. That's what we're we've left it. We we're entering diversity just fine, and things were going great. Then you decided to add the new word called inclusiveness. And you're killing us. You're killing the cities. You're killing business. You're killing the tax structure, income. You're uh, creating um, social programs. You're creating um, uh, inflation. You're causing all kinds of things. And you think it's great. Or you're so short-sighted that it's like, oh, as long as I can get a check from the government, or they'll take care of me, or I can get welfare, um, I'm good to go. But you don't look at the big picture. You just think about you. We need leadership to think about us, all of us, not just half the state, not just a quarter of the state, the entire state, whether it's Washington or Oregon. I'm in Oregon, so we have the same problems. Portland is um, the next city to start falling. And we cannot defund our police. We need to stand behind them. That is the toughest job ever. These are human beings with families that are helping to keep law and order. And they want to help people that are on the street. They want to help homelessness. But you can't tie their hands behind their backs. You've got to allow them to make arrests. You've got to tell our judges to prosecute. We can't just throw them back out on the street. They need help. They need someone to interfere with their life. <laughs> That's my dog in the background. She's very talkative. Um, we need to really step in and help these people. And yes, we are going to infringe on their privacy. We are going to uh, change their lives. We're going to lock them up for treatment. Not, not the way we're doing it now. That If we do lock them up, we just lock them up. But if we have a new program like what they have over in Rhode Island, which if you watch this movie, I will put a link down below in the in the description how you, uh, to watch this movie and see how some things have worked. And out of 100%, maybe right now, 1% or 2% come out of that terrible lifestyle and it takes their own drive to do it or someone special stepped into their lives. Usually it's a police officer. And uh, every one of them will say, thank goodness someone held me accountable. And, and, and I got myself out of that lifestyle. But no, we just think, leave them alone. Let them take over our cities and stuff. And it doesn't work. And we cannot let this happen. You're, every big city is getting destroyed with that attitude. And I'm sorry, but this liberal attitude has got to stop. Um, I'm not saying conservative is the answer. I'm saying compromise, common sense, living by the uh, laws and enforcing them, and judges to enforce the laws, and prosecutors to know that they're when they're prosecuting, it's something to help the the person or the criminal to uh, um, 
be successful in getting healthy again. And uh, of course, when I'm going to do a video like this, my uh, my dogs are going to be acting up in the background because that's just what they always do when I do a show. So um, anyway, what's next? I mean, once the big cities start to fall, will it go uh, to the more medium cities? I mean, uh, they're reporting people uh, homeless in places all over now, even well beyond the normal spots that we used to see homelessness. Now, homelessness does not mean necessarily drugs. However, um, it tends to be a, a factor to get people on drugs. And and uh, when they're down and out, and when you're talking about depression, um, uh, drugs start to look good. Um, and mental health is another thing out there that, yes, there's mental health, but to let someone out there without giving them any law enforcement to bring them back in and put them into programs to give them support and help them find a way to live with their mental health. Um, otherwise, we just leave them out there to die because the drugs and the homelessness and the malnutrition, et cetera, um, uh, no health care at orgs. You're literally taking mental health people out there and just saying, we're going to pretend you're not here and we're just going to let you die. Um, a lot of them will commit suicide. A lot of them will uh, be so um, depressed and so uh, out of sorts that they'll literally kill themselves either by suicide or by drugs. We're not helping. Turning the the other cheek and walking away is not helping. We need to spend the money and we need leadership that understands that we need to step in. We need to hold, make these people accountable so we can help them. Is it pretty? No. Is it uh, infringing on their privacy? Probably. Um, but the alternative for them is death. One way or another, it's death hopelessness. Or we step in, spend the money that way instead of wasting our money on just um, fixing everything that they damage. It's insane. I want to definitely commend Como uh, for, I believe it's the second time. Um, yeah, it was made by uh, Eric jo uh, Johnson at Como. Um, second time he's made a movie like this, and it's been... Um, they're done very well and they're very informative and they are being um, two sides of the coin. They are saying, here's the things that were successes. Um, <laughs> but I've got... Hey, stop guys. Come here. This is not the time. So uh, uh, I like to bring the human factor in there. I can close the door and all that stuff, but when we do stuff on YouTube, that's the difference between the uh, scripted kind of things in real life. And and so it's kind of funny sometimes when you get, you're trying to be serious and you got a dog going nuts in the background. Um, it's real. And that's what makes YouTube unique. And uh, I do want to, uh, once again, urge you to watch this video. And I, I will put a link to it. It's, it's a Facebook video. I haven't seen the YouTube version of it but I will put the link of where I saw this video. And I urge you to watch it. It's very good. It has great ideas of how, um, and also kind of goes through what these city council members are doing. And, and it, it's like they're so disconnected from the real world and they're making policies and new laws and ordinances that are totally insane and it's doing the opposite. And they're driving out some of the leaderships uh, in Seattle. Their police chief left. They're just like, I can't do this. Um, many judges have left because when they started prosecuting and, and put, uh, handing out uh, uh, punishment, that the uh, uh, pressure on them to uh, to just let people walk and go out back out the door because we want to leave them alone. Um, was too much in their careers. They retired early or et cetera. Or, uh, it's, it's a shame. And it's like, what are we thinking? Is that really what you want your leadership to do? So I'm really urging you guys, when the next elections come, 
stop this one side or the other and say, are we electing officials that are literally in our best interest? And I mean all of it. I need to make sure that my Democrats that I hang around with and live with are just as happy as us Republicans. And so uh, we need leadership like that. Um, and if you have to go conservative for a while, do it. It's the cities. Look at your cities. Your cities, everyone that's falling is Democrat ran. Mix it up. Make them accountable to each other and let them debate ideas, not just be one-sided uh, liberal ideas where the cities are falling. The only way people like us, the public, can fix this is not making videos like this and yelling and screaming. We need to go and vote people in and send the message that we're not going to uh, tolerate this anymore. How many people are moving to this, from the cities to the country like I did? And we just want to just turn off the news and forget you guys are doing this stuff. But it's, you, you start to infringe even on our side of, of life where we're trying to be self-reliant and accountable for ourselves, feed ourselves, and feed others. Um, but eventually we can't ignore you. But the answer isn't, oh, let's run away from the cities. Let's fix the cities. Let's fix the leadership. Let's uh, take a stand. Guys, can you not feel the fact that we can't ignore this anymore? Do you not feel like we may have to stand up for some stuff in the future? And yes, it's so hard to, con uh, to even comprehend. But our forefathers did. They did it. Some of them stood up and they went to battle even to say enough is enough. We need to reunite. We need to fix broken things and get our United States back in order. And we need to get in that mode again. And it's sad. We can't just hide behind our video games anymore. We can't just hide behind our jobs and things like that. All this is creeping up behind us, and we can't ignore it anymore. And homelessness, mental illness, drugs, um, those are results of a failing society. Of uh, We are letting people fall through the cracks because we are so PC-oriented and uh, think we're going to infringe on people's uh, privacy and stuff that we're just letting those guys, people, die. They're just out there dying, one, a, a different kind of death. And and we're just turning the other way and pretend they're not existent. Pretend we don't see those tents over there or see these people living in old RVs. Just pretend it's not happening. It's just not really, really happening. We're just pretend it's not going on. But yet, I can't go to my downtown anymore because I'm scared. It's not safe. There's drugs everywhere. There's bad people. Uh, it's your fault. It's not their fault. It's our fault. Your fault. You need to change the leadership. You need to change this commitment to being a liberal or being a Republican. You need to change to what's best for my cities and what's best for all the state. Is my rules here in uh, in the downtown Seattle good for the little urban farming areas out in uh, uh, eastern Washington or eastern Oregon? We need to think about everyone, not just yourselves. And unfortunately, cities carry population, so they have more way in, in decision-making. And that needs to be fixed. Or us, we get smarter about who we elect. This is, once again, not a political thing of saying you've got to be a Republican to fix this, but maybe you need to at least make it a 50-50 mix. So maybe the decision-making will be a little more sound. And we need to make sure we don't have politicians that are just in there for a career, money, and greed because they're being driven by it. They're ignoring people to make money. And the lobbyists are just having a heyday. And so really, our politicians are answering to people's wallets. And it's not our wallet. 
All they look at us is making sure we pay our taxes. And you know, as long as this keeps going, your taxes will go up, whether you believe it or not. And inflation is going to go up. All of this is going to go up, and it's all because of what's going on in these big cities. It, we're being destroyed. We need to stand up and say, no, we're putting different people in. Um, I think we had the right idea when we did Trump. And I think a lot of people were kind of happy with him for the first year or two. I think he just kind of hurt himself. We'll just leave it at that. But that was a, a, a indicator telling leadership we had enough. And we'll probably do it again. We just hope that we can get someone else that we're a little bit more satisfied with. So. Hey, it was a start. So anyway, guys, um, I want to thank you very much for listening. I'm very much concerned about the big cities, and that's why I left the big cities. And uh, it's sad. And by the way, Seattle was a beautiful place. Uh, the town was a gorgeous place to go to and visit, but not anymore. It's a, actually uh, a security risk if you take the time to go there. I, I can't even imagine having to catch the ferry in downtown, I'd be scared to death just to drive through there. Never felt that way before. When I lived there before, it was a beautiful place to go, uh, a place you could walk around with your family and lots of historic buildings that didn't have a bunch of graffiti on it. And it's really, really sad. And that's the only reason why I wanted to produce this video is the fact that I've watched my old city be destroyed. And which cities next? Now, are they going to start trickling out to the medium-sized cities once they've destroyed the big cities? This is pitiful, people. And the only one people that can fix it is you and I. So thank you very much for listening to Easy Street. Um, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Have a great day. Be safe. Until next time, bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.